Hi everyone, I'm Devin Coombs and today I'm going to go over an intermediate accounting question and this involves stock issuance costs. So I wrote this question and I will be covering the difference between stock issuance cost and debt issuance cost as well as the journal entry uh, for the issuance of stock. Um, so let's go over it. Uh, Debbin Corporation, so my corporation, issued 20 million of its $1 par common shares for 400 million on January 27th. Underwriting, accounting, and legal costs necessary for the issuance of these shares were 10 million. Uh, how are the stock's issuance costs treated compared to debt issuance cost? And what is the journal entry for the issuance of stock? So let's go over the difference too. So stock issuance costs are just treated as a reduction of cash received, as well as a reduction in the paid capital. That's if there's a par. So if there isn't a par, it's a reduction in the common stock. Um, this question, there is a par value. So it's a reduction in the paid in capital. Um, the, the difference between debt issuance treatment and stock issuance treatment, uh, the costs regarding with those, is that debt issuance treatment is put into a separate account, like de debt issuance costs, and then amortized over the life of the debt while we just reduce the cost of the, uh, the cash received from the stock. So let's look at the journal entry and see how that how that changes everything. So as you can see from the journal entry, I originally would receive 400 million from the uh, from the issuance of the stock, but we paid 10 million in underwriting, accounting, and other issuance costs related to the stock. So we're only going to debit cash for 390 million. We're going to subtract out the 10 million. Then we're still going to do since we did 20 million shares. We're going to multiply that by the par value and credit our common stock as we normally would. And the remainder is going to go in paid in capital excess of par. So that's our plug-in number. The reason that is, uh, because, is because it's effectively uh, reducing our equity and reducing our assets. So uh, I believe the reason that this happens is so that it doesn't flow through in retained earnings and net income uh, because we are just dealing with equity. Uh, this is the way that we currently approach it in GAP. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or write in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope this helps and have a great day.